The day begins at Boston Latin much like it does at any other public high school in the city. Groggy students crowd the halls, locker doors slam, and teachers try to move kids along to class. But Boston Latin stands apart. It is arguably one of the best public high schools in the country. Boston Latin is the oldest public high school in America. Although much has changed since its beginning 360 years ago, the school still offers a demanding classical education. That is, if you get in. Only one out of every six students who takes the tough entrance exam is admitted. From its earliest days, Boston Latin has produced some of the nation's most influential citizens, including five signers of the Declaration of Independence. Emerson studied here, as did Joseph Kennedy Sr. and Leonard Bernstein. The names of the school's most prominent alumni line the walls of the school's auditorium. The Boston Latin School is the oldest school in the United States, founded in 1635. We have a funny line around here that says we predate Harvard by one year. Harvard was founded so that Boston Latin School boys would have some place to go. In past generations, the halls here were crowded exclusively with young white boys. The picture is quite a bit different today. The 2,400 students who attend Latin now represent a wide range of economic and ethnic groups. When you walk through the corridors here, you see a diverse student body, representative of all of the different sections of the city of Boston. We find that the one overriding crux here is can you do the work? You want to see Andrew's method? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. By almost any standard, the schoolwork at Latin is difficult. The demanding curriculum includes six years of Latin, intensive studies in the classics, math, and the sciences. It's not unusual for a student to have three to four hours of homework a night. The hard work pays off, however. Boston Latin students top the list in the state's recent MCAS tests. 98% of its graduating class goes on to four-year college. A lot of Boston Latin school is all about work. I think the, the reason a lot of people you know, fall behind is simply because they don't want to do the work. Um, so I see myself as simply a hardworking student. Shi Wen Li and his family left their small village in China and came to Boston 15 years ago. He worked his way into Latin school, is now second in his senior class, and has been accepted for early admission to Harvard. Boston Latin School has really shaped you know, my ideals and values, and it's gave me a lot of skills. Very good. Ephigenia. In the past, students attending their first assembly were asked to look at the classmates sitting to their left and right. Two of you, they were told, will not make it to graduation. While that sink or swim philosophy is legendary, it's no longer accurate. Today, tough love is more the modus operandi. There appear tutor sessions after school, and teachers and alumni available for additional coaching on Saturdays. The goal? To graduate as many of the students as possible. Still, between a fourth and one-third of those who started Boston Latin transfer to other schools before graduation. Latin school, it's a big transition, and when you come here, it's all the top students from everywhere. You're not alone anymore. You're not like the top three kids in the class. Everybody in here was top. Drudis Nichols was a star pupil at her elementary school, but struggled at Boston Latin. She was a likely dropout candidate until she pulled it together became involved and brought her grades up. Today, she's president of the senior class. It's not good enough just doing your homework at Latin school. You have to do your homework and study your homework and know your homework because just doing your homework is going to get your C. If you know your homework, you can get a B. But if you study your homework and stay focused, you can get an A. And anybody can get an A at Latin school. It's all about focus and desire. If you want something, you're going to go for it. Yeah, Mina, I put religion next to culture, so maybe customs, traditions, uh, celebrations. The festivals. students are phenomenal. There's a culture of excellence here that is so powerful that you can't put a price on it. And it has to do with the fact that every student who walks through the door here, whether you come from um, the far reaches of a Dorchester neighborhood or from a fancy townhouse on Beacon Hill, you know you belong here. And Walking through that door is a tremendously powerful thing. Some people have the notion of this being an elitist place, but I think there's a, a more profound message about Latin school in that it allows everyone 
despite your economic circumstances, or despite whatever family hardship you have, you have the opportunity to walk through the door. This is a very inspiring place. In 1995, a white girl was denied entrance to Boston Latin School despite having scored higher on the entrance test than many entering minority applicants. Her father sued, claiming the school's policy of keeping black and Hispanic enrollment at 35 percent was unconstitutional. The courts agreed, and this year black and Latino youngsters constitute only 16 percent of the incoming class of seventh graders. While academic quality is alive and well at Latin, Pluralism may be fading. I think the concern is that we continue to maintain the diversity. We, we, we certainly would like to do that, and we're, that's the road we're traveling down. But we want a diverse student body who is academically talented. And so it's incumbent upon us as a school to try and reach out to those elementary schools. The question is how do we get people, how do we get young people in the elementary grades prepared ready and willing to take the test and then make the choice to come here. It is a challenge that has more than just the administration concerned. Senior Kadisha Malcolm remembers struggling in her early days at Latin. This year she formed a group called Young Leaders of Color along with 15 other students to tackle the problem of diversity at the school. The group mentors younger students and campaigns to get more city kids prepared to take the entrance exam. We try to get students in the school to take leadership role in their community by going out and tutoring, trying to change something that they believe is not right, improve the standards of the school, help students to stay in the school instead of transferring, also to get more st students from the Boston Public Schools to enter Boston Latin School. There are certain things that you learn about a person and where they come from that's not in the history books, that's not in any textbook. You can only get it from first-hand experience. We're not getting fully educated unless we're in a diverse population which can teach, we can learn about one another. It's caused by the air. That's all you had to say. That's what I said. No, you were going around and saying. Race can be a highly charged issue in the Boston public schools, and Boston Latin is at its share of challenges. Last fall, a white student called his teacher a racial epithet in class. Earlier this term, a melee between Asian and white students broke out behind the school after dismissal. While these incidents have raised concerns, many at the school feel they're unfortunate but isolated occurrences. And the stories we hear about, um, especially fights and things of that sort, it, it's, it's uh, centered around a small group of students. And unfortunately, that's what sometimes represents the school, and that's what people hear about the school. But they don't hear about all the students getting along and organizing clubs based on diversity and accepting culture. So, I mean, I think very positively about the environment in the school. Because a lot of kids, like, we don't really pay attention to that. A lot of kids are, like, basically colorblind. We just like, okay, this is another Latin school student. This is another kid trying to graduate. We don't really pay attention to that. Like, the minorities, whites, Asians. That's for the adults to take care of. I think they're characteristic of uh, what happens when you put a group of people together in a, in a confined space. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about the Army or school. I was in the Army. And from time to time, um, incidents would break out, tensions would rise. Uh, those incidents were not characteristic of the Army or its mission or the units that I served in any more than these incidents are characteristic of this school or its mission um, and, and our commitment to educate. If the administration and the community is about its business, those things will be uh, controlled and contained and resolved. Bill Chabel, a successful businessman and CEO in Boston, remembers his years at Latin School with a mixture of pride and pain. As hard as it was, he says, it was well worth it. And he's sure the experience there will work as well for today's students as it did for his generation. You talk to almost every graduate and they'll say, I hated it when I was there. It really was difficult. But without that, I wouldn't be where I am. And these same kids can be saying this 10 years out, 20 years out, 30 years out, 40 years out. And they will make a major impact on not only our community, but on the country. 
Latson School alumni say they accomplished so much because they mastered the life skills of study, organization, and time management while in high school. And many of them are now giving something back. Jesse Southwick graduated from Latin in 1994. After earning a degree in physics from Princeton, he's returned to the high school to teach. As I got through college, I realized that I had a lot of commitment to the school and to the city and to the students in the city. And I also love physics. And coming back to teach here was a nice way to connect all those things and really sort of share some of that enthusiasm and love of physics, but also with the school. It's a lot of work. I run the students really hard and they run me very hard. Um, it's, a, it's a demanding school, both for the teachers and for the students, but it's really been rewarding. Density is just a property of, of the substance, so if you have half of much of it, it's still the same density. Alumni are giving in other ways, too. The school's official alumni organization, the Boston Latin School Association, is conducting a unique $30 million capital campaign, the most ambitious financial crusade ever undertaken for a public secondary school. In conjunction with the $34 million state-funded expansion and renovation of the building, the private campaign aims to raise money to build Latin's endowment and enhance the curriculum. Our priorities are in teaching and learning, uh, which basically will focus on a library media center, the visual and performing arts, and infusing technology into the curriculum, training the faculty in new teaching methods uh, involving technology. It is extremely unusual. Um, we know of a handful of schools across the country who are doing this. The city can only do so much in terms of revenue, and we get the same per pupil allocation that every other school gets. How then do you provide the extras for young people? How then do you address the needs of teaching and learning? How do you infuse technology? All of those extras, athletics, extracurricular activities, those are of concern to the alumni, and that's where the capital campaign really will be of great benefit to us. Public school hunger for private dollars is nothing new, but the magnitude of the capital campaign is a far cry from student car washes and candy sales, even eclipsing the fundraising efforts of most educational foundations. The Alumni Association hopes the effort will be a model for other public schools throughout the country. I think we can better the entire school system by working with the top school. I think we also can prove that there's a model, this same first school in the country can be a model to other schools, suburban schools, uh, inner city schools, where the alumni have been very strong and very successful and can give back and can really take an interest. At a time when some public schools have almost become synonymous with drugs, violence, and low test scores, Boston Latin School stands apart. The alumni campaign hopes to secure the school's future as a place where students come to appreciate the importance of education, not only as a means to other ends, but as a worthwhile goal in itself. I want to say it's one of the best schools I've ever, ever been in. It's not only America's oldest school, I think it's America's finest school and we're committed to keeping it that way, to set that standard and to have others um, contend and uh, rise to the standard and join us in our pursuit of excellence in education. The expectation here is high for everyone. The culture of pride is sometimes almost palpable. There's, a, there's an innate sense of pride, and I, don't, I think once a student has it here, you can't take it away. Latin school is like, these are your friends that you're going to know 50 years from now. You become a community, you become more united, you have to stay focused and graduate. And that's the best thing, that's the best feeling you'll ever have, graduating from Latin school. And I can't wait till June.